All right, so for this problem, we're trying to find the force P that must be applied to this cylinder in order to make this plug at point A become flush with this ceiling here. And so basically in this scenario, um, there is a hollow cylinder with this long brass rod that is stuck down, or brass tube that is stuck down into this opening in the cylinder. And there's a plug at the top um, with a force P that's being pushed onto this plug. And we're trying to figure out the maximum or the uh, force that must be applied in order for this plug to be flush with the opening of the cylinder. So there are two things that are going to happen here. So we're going to have we're going to be looking at the deformation, um, and we need to check the deformation of the brass tube and also the deformation of the cylinder itself in order to make the total uh, deformation equal to three over sixty four inches as specified right here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, draw out kind of what we need to find. So we need to make sure that the total deformation is equal to 3 64 inches. And so there's going to be two deformations that we need to look at. So we're going to call this deformation 1 plus deformation 2 equals the total deformation. And so the deformation 1 being the deformation of the brass and deformation 2 being the deformation of the aluminum which we are told that the uh, cylinder is made out of aluminum um, so let's go ahead and start by looking at the uh, deformation in the brass tube so as you see here in this diagram, whenever the force P is applied, the brass tube is going to shrink down because that force is compressing it. However, the force is also pushing down through the tube and pushing against the bottom of the cylinder, which is going to stretch these sides here and make these sides uh, stretch and lengthen. So we need to check that the deformation in both of these is equal to 3 64ths inches. So let's start by looking at our case one with the deformation in the brass tube. So we need to find the deformation and remember the formula is PL over AE. So let's go ahead and start plugging in what we know. We do not know P right now. We know that the length in this brass tube is 15 inches. However, there is also this little part right here that is kind of hard to see but you can tell here based on their measurements that is 364 inches. So we need to add that 3 64 inches to our measurements. And then we're going to divide that by our area, which uh, we currently do not know the area. Um, and we need to divide that by our area, which we are told the brass tube has a cross-sectional area of 0 0.34 inches squared. And then we need to also divide that by our modulus of elasticity, which we are told is 15 times 10 to the sixth PSI. And so dividing all this out, we get that our first deformation, deformation one for the brass tube, is equal to 2.95 times 10 to the negative sixth inches over pounds. And we're going to multiply that by P, since we do not know P still. Um, secondly, we're going to check our second case, which is our deformation 2. And we're going to use the same exact formula, PL over AE. Once again, we do not know P in this case. And we know that the length of these tubes, on the, or the sides of the cylinder, are 15 inches. We don't have to add the 3 64 inches in this case because we're just looking at the side. And then the area, I think we're told the area as well. Yep, 0.4 inches squared. And let's see, I think we're told the modulus of elasticity, which is 10.4 times 10 to the sixth PSI. So multiplying this out, we get that our deformation two is equal to 3.61 times 10 to the negative sixth inches over pounds times P because P is still unknown. So now if we want to find our total P or the total deformation in this case, we're going to just add both of these. So we're going to add this 
and this together and we're going to get that that is equal to 6.56 times 10 to the negative sixth inches over pounds and then that's also going to be multiplied by p and then that's going to be set equal to our 3 64th inches because remember this here is our total deformation which we want it to be equal to 3 64th inches so now all we're going to do here is solve for p and just dividing this out and solving for p we get that p is equal to 7.15 kips and that's our answer for this problem